on your Jump, 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 jump. What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party This the people party Peace and love, party people, in the place to be is the BKMC, the MCEO, your host of the world's best podcast, The People's Party. Always, yeah. and as usual, I got my lovely and talented and hair flipping. I was trying to be on the side. <laughs> Co host, Jasmine <laughs> Lee, in the place to be. What's up, Jasmine? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. I just was trying to figure out what side was best. All right, we, we can we can wait. We, I was trying to hurry up while right, you. You want to figure it out? Intro. I'm good. I'm good. You sure? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. Are you ready? I'm ready. ready. <laughs> okay, because today's episode is very exciting. As if the rest aren't exciting, but this is equally as exciting. I am very excited to talk to our next guest on the People's Party. This is an artist that I've been listening to for a number of years, and I've been watching him grow and grow and start to just dominate his space and his lane. He has worked with some of my favorite artists and people like Joey Badass, Smoke Dizza, Schoolboy Q, Kendrick Lamar. His debut album, Sylvia Demo, gained widespread acclaim from myself, Mm -hmm. but also a lot of hip hop fans and critics. Um, He dropped his debut album, The Sun's Tirade, which by the way is an amazing album name. Came out number 17 on Billboard. This artist is dropping a new project yes. called The House is Burning. So it will be a celebration tonight. Hey. I, like I said, I'm very excited to see where this is going. I love the path he's on. I believe very deeply in the way that he presents his music. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Isaiah Rashad on the People's Party. Hey, that's a, that's a, hell, of a hell of an introduction, man. Oh, man. Thank you me. deserve it, man. Like, tight. Yeah, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good um, to meet you. The way that you approach the game is the way I feel like I would approach the game if I was your age. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were born in 1991, right? You have that that skit on your album. You're like, man, yeah. if you're born in 1991, the woman you know is born yeah. in 94. Yeah, shit weird. It's kind of <laughs> weird. Yeah, that's just weird. You seem very mature for artists born in 1991. I mean, that's just in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's in front of people, yeah. No I have doubt. my moments. Um, shit, 1991, I was a, a freshman in high school. Yeah, I think it was, my mom said I was born during Oprah. During Oprah? Oprah was over. Okay. Um, Big Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, she might be watching this. I'm never going to meet Oprah now. Hey, man. Oprah's definitely never watching this. I'm not <laughs> fat shaming yeah. Oprah. I'm just saying that we have Big oh, Oprah <laughs> and we have smaller Oprah. I mean, and, yeah, both are and medium Luther. Oprah. And we have Big Luther. Yeah, and some people Luther. like Big Luther better. Some people might like Big Oprah better. Yo, random. Who's um, reading Rainbow? Reading Lavar Burton. Rainbow. Uh, man, is it? Isn't there like some type of campaign to have him do Jeopardy or some shit? It is. Yeah, he and he's to. he's he guest has the most interesting it. voice like ever. I yeah, looked up his to Yeah, I watched Roots. Yeah. I watched the new one and the old one like over the pandemic. I don't know what was going on with you me. You watched the new one? What's the new one? Queen? It's a new one called Roots. Oh, yeah, it came out the like same 2018, 2019. Oh, I didn't see that. I but you Queen decided to watch that during the pandemic? I watched a lot of shit. I watched a lot of shit too. Yeah, no, but before. not the I watched all the roots. Batmans. Yo. I watched every up. Batman. Mm, Everything. Nah. Not not the one with uh, what, um, Bane. Not Bane, the old Bane, like Batman Forever. Yeah, Arnold I watched Batman Forever. That is the worst shit. That's the, that's the nipple suit Batman. Yeah, that shit hurt me. What's that, Joel back. Schumacher? I know these comics. Okay. I talked to fucking Mitch Gerald the other day. To who? Mitch Gerald. He's like one of my favorite illustrators. He okay. Just, you gotta, I put you Mitch on. Gerald, okay. I'll put you on. I'll bring please, you some books. Please. That is. I love please. that. I want to get more into like graphic novels. I know I'm into films, so my comic book history is based on Same films. concept. You know what I'm saying? I got yeah. interested in it because when I was a kid, the only comic I read was like Transformer, G.I. Joe. I never read that. That shit seemed kind of corny. No it was corny. Oh, it was God. corny as fuck. I only read it because that's the cartoons I liked. Facts, but why, why, I, you ever think about why you was liking Talking Cars? It was the transformation process. I like the Beast Wars. You know what? You remember Beast Wars? I like Beast Wars. Yeah, but I actually fire. was a Transformer for, I was a ghetto Transformer for Halloween. Oh, God. That's I made my own Transformer. You had a cardboard box? Cardboard box? Yeah, shit. I did a whole, had roller skates on. Swear. I did the whole shit. Who were you? Noises. Were you Optimus Prime? I was Bumblebee. Swear. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't Are there Bumblebee. Pictures? There's no pictures. I That's wasn't pictures. Bumblebee. That's what I was going for. I, I didn't look like Bumblebee. More like Cliff Jumper. But what he didn't tell you is this. Are you re- usually this revealing with your guests? No, I'm not. I don't even know. We haven't even asked no questions. Right. Yeah. We just talked. <laughs> but what he didn't tell you is that he wore that costume last year for Halloween. I don't even fuck with Halloween. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> you both use uh, both your first and your last name, which is it's not common in 
rapper's history. Um, and you both have African names. Was it important to rep Africa when you decided to go by Isaiah Rashad? My mom told me that my name's African, but she didn't ever really break it down to me. <laughs> okay. I just, I ain't want to be, okay, I call myself young boy for a little bit, Y-U-N-G-B-O-I, and that shit just looked dumb to me on my space. And a couple of things, Zay Taylor, when I was a big Wiz fan, when I was like 17, I had a couple of them. But then I was like, Isaiah Rashad sounds like an author. Mm -hmm. I, what if I want to do something else? What if this rap shit <laughs> don't work? What if I want to do something else? And I got to do, and I can do something else. I can still use his name, flip it. And it was cool. And my government name is spelled with one less I. Nah, oh, that's how your parents spelled it. On accident, I think it was the epidural hitting her kind of crazy. <laughs> the epidural does not do that. To you. That's hilarious. Yeah, like Isaiah is Hebrew, which is African, I suppose. It means God saves. I just looked this up. Okay. And Rashad is a. Uh, it means it's it's uh, it's Arabic, which is I suppose also Arabic, it's righteous. Mm. God saves. The God righteous. saves righteous. Tell it. How did you feel when you made? The same choice to use your name. Um, my first rap name was Genesis. And I had a song called Word is Flesh. Okay. And and that's what I was on. And that was that was that was about a month I was Genesis. But um I don't I, you know, it was the Afrocentric era in hip hop and Talib Kwali just felt like that's it what I should be doing. It took a long time to know it was your real name. Yeah. Because it sounds so like you came up with it. <laughs> right. No, I'm Talib Kwali Green. What's your last name? McLean. So you and me have very similar paths. I want to change my name. So I just like <laughs> I kind of want to just drop the last name. Right. Well, I mean, you're professionally known as Isaiah Rashad. So. I like when I go to Ireland and they ask me my last name. <laughs> and they're like, swear. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, my hair's red too sometimes. Right. Ain't yeah. it beautiful that hip hop and ramen can take you to Ireland? Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful well, good. thing. Um, your uh, mom was a hairdresser, right? Still is. Still hair, hair, hair yeah. and and uh, your pops used to let you listen to Scarface or Too Short. Too Short, Scarface. They were young parents. Like right. my mom had me when she was twenty. Okay. So when I was six, she had to think about what I listened to with my kid. Sorry, but we listen to some thugged out shit sometimes. <laughs> and then like I'd be wondering why I look at people on the internet sometimes. Why they got their kid? At least she don't cuss though. Right. She she get at me for cussing, except on the songs. Yeah, I am. Um, I never censored my music around. My children, your shit. Like um, I'm not. I'm talking about the shit I listen to. I'm not oh. talking about my my music. I do the way I write. I the way I write. My rule is if I can't say it in front of my children or in front of my parents, then I don't need to be writing it. I'm on ratchet. No offense. Well, man. then you do got a lot of freedom there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. yeah, my mother is not ratchet at all. She <laughs> she don't like when I curse or she don't like. She's when I classy ratchet. She's gonna see this. I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta qualify it. Yeah, I'm his sorry. mom Shout is definitely not ratchet at all. Dude. Oh yeah, she you just met my mom. I did. She was a wonderful woman. Not that ratchet isn't wonderful. Yeah, but she's she, classy ratchet. Your mom was a wonderful woman to me. Well, thank you. I'll tell her you said so. She cook for you. Yeah. yeah. She's oh. turning into a well-rounded grandma now. Okay, you've given her a lot of grandkids. Three of them. That's good. She's Same amount of kids I got. Fuck. I gotta slow down. <laughs> you, just had, you said you just had one. I just had one. Bless. Yes, yeah, a year tough. old. That's great. Your mom and your stepfather are five percenters, is that true? They were. Okay. And then they went back to, I think around like the 35, some, some shit around then, they went back to uh, Baptist church. That happens to black parents. My parents was like a activist and like, you know, on the front lines of activism, they, be, they became like buppies, which was like black yuppies it was for in us, the 80s. Though. It was for us. It yeah. was like yeah, to get a structure stability. that we could understand yeah. and a wider community. Because sometimes, some, and depending on what city you're in, like in, any religion could be kind of not have a, a huge community in a certain mm -hmm. thing. And it was, I guess it was some shit that's easy to understand. 5% philosophy um, and ideology has so much effect on hip hop, and so many of our guests who come through the show yeah. have been touched by that in so many different ways. Definitely, is is that the same for you? Yeah, I was trying to learn. I remember during this hiatus. No, it was before during the Sunset Rage. That's why the Sunset. I was during the Sunset Rage. I was going through some weird uh -huh. spiritual thing. I was trying to learn the Supreme Alphabet. I mean, oh, you trying to? I was trying to. Yeah, and, and I fell off. Mathematics. I fell off though. I fell off, but I was trying to like understand it more and and um, just gain information. And not so much make a decision on who I was gonna believe or what I believed, mm -hmm. and then yeah. So I'm, I'm still on a journey. 
my favorite thing about you as an artist is the way that you use your voice. In addition to you being a great lyricist and a great songwriter and yeah. a great chooser of music and production and all that, the way you flow is very passionate. Sometimes you could be screaming. Sometimes it sounds like you're crying. Yeah. Sometimes you're whispering. Sometimes you, you know, <laughs> just the way, like you really- Only rappers, only like other artists and shit and, and people who want to be artists really listen to that shit, I noticed. Yeah, well, Yasin Bass said on our show, if you really love art, you make it. Yeah. So if you even if you're just a fan of it, you're making art somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the way that you do it is like valleys and peaks. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick does this. I come from studying, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me about how you, what you studied to get to that point. Wayne, Andre, mm-hmm. Kanye, mm-hmm. most. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And around the, the combination of okay i went through a, a, a lot of swoops and rap like i was listening to a lot of devin the dude he's a part of it too because mm-hmm. he like stoner andre 3000 to me mm-hmm. no well, they put more respect on it he was way out way before andre 3000 but devin the dude definitely because he's and he's clever and i like the way niggas ride the beat but i gotta say wayne and kind of yeah. future yeah. wayne future boosie Juvenile, well, less juvenile, but ju- the way Juvie lose, uses his voice too. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I guess I focus more on the sound of, of certain stuff because most of my favorite rappers to me, I feel like if I wanted to make a verse better than them, I could. Mm-hmm. But the amount of fucking words y'all putting them shit in my fucking, <laughs> I'm like, I'm straight. I'm like, I'm good, baby. And that's crazy because when I listen to your music, that's what I like. That's part of what I like about a lot of the songs. I'm like, mm. oh, this is just like, he just giving us pieces. Of music, like like sometimes you just you 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 lean you find a pocket. Yeah. Like I'm just on this pocket for a second. Okay, now I'm in a different pocket. Yeah. Like and that's what it'd be. It'd be like all these. It would be like a collection of pockets. Yeah. I'm, I feel seen right now. <laughs> I feel real seen right now. Now, all of that voice stuff and all of that passion. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about going through something spiritually. You wanted to become a preacher. Is that correct? I, yeah, I wanted to be a preacher for a while. I wanted, I wanted to be a teacher for a while. Mm. I always. Man, I'm, as I get older, I'm more okay with like the type of the intent by some of the shit I be doing. Mm-hmm. I always want to do something positive, mm-hmm. and maybe it's my mom told me to be a teacher like the, my whole life because she was like, "You got it. It'd be a salary you could have." But after a while, <laughs> yeah. the effect that my teachers have had on me in my life, um, in school and outside of school, always made me want to do something like that. And mm-hmm. I feel like the best way I could do this shit is kind of giving portions of myself and allowing myself to be documented as being like. Cause I'm like, I used to look up to Master P before I had cable. I'm like, I can't imagine the overexposure that people have. They're, you're gonna have a fucking hero, and somebody's gonna look up to you. So I try to try to be that, yeah. to an extent. The story I heard was it was Outkast, AT Aliens, make it be like, ah man, that album. Can we talk about Outkast for a second? That album, all right, won all of their shit's great. Well, you shouted out Southern uh, Playalistic Cadillac Funk Music on the the West Savannah joint. The first time I heard that shit was Chopped and Screwed. The first time I really listened to it was Chopped and Screwed. Are you talking about AT Aliens? Southern Playalistic. The first time I heard it was like And I heard you say Idlewild, too. That was fucking crazy, though. Like, yeah. So I didn't even know what it really sounded like. I was just like, what is this fucking crazy-ass shit? My cousin was playing it. And after that... I got more into it. Like, I already knew about him early in, in life, and I, w- I knew I wanted to be a rapper, like, as a kid. Mm-hmm. But around the teenagers, when I really started, like, to, I told my mom, I'm like, I'm gonna do this shit. And she's like, Irish, right, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I got a lime wire, nigga, stole all y'all shit. And just study. <laughs> I'd be that. at work at, like, it's a place called Converges, uh-huh. um, like, Direct TV. I worked mm-hmm. work at Call Center. I'd be on that motherfucker writing down the lyrics that y'all niggas would say. Mm-hmm. And I'd be trying to break it down and try to reformulate it. Because my flow was so much like Wayne's that I had to figure out how to undo that shit wow. and build it back up type of shit. Okay. It's like sports. Like it's like mechanics. You were a real student of this shit. Yeah, I love that shit. Yeah. It's, just, it's just interesting. Yeah. That's why I don't really think it's too many bad rap, too much bad rap. Because even bad rap is funny. And right. That's, that's true. Right. They, you're trying to figure out how they made certain decisions. Man, I don't fucking like been in my room when I was like 15, 16. And just pissed because I couldn't get a verse off. I couldn't finish writing one that I thought was quality. So it took me so long to be okay with hearing what I was saying to the point that when I got there, it was like, whatever. And my process is my process. I don't even examine myself like that. Mm. Yeah. Word. You came up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, hip hop scene. 
Um, you're a part of the House Collective, Duke Deuce, and Sample 36 Mafia on House is Burning. Um, how did that scene play into your musical upbringing? My family's music is pretty eclectic, but I'm, I am from the South, so mm -hmm. I just come with it. And I've been living in L.A. for so long. And I'll never hear nothing that sounds like music I grew up listening to, mm. but I didn't want to make an album that sound like a 90s album, right. 90s Southern rap. But I like the idea of fusion and changing shit, and there are new producers like this, this kid, Icy Twat. Fire. You said Icy Twat? Yeah, that's his wow. name. Okay. Like this crazy kind of lo-fi, it's real Good deep name. bass type <laughs> shit. Right. You know, like some shit like Smoke, um, mm -hmm. Space Goes Perp, that type yeah, of, yeah. those type of, some type of bass, bass lines and drums right, and right. shit. And then the Memphis shit, it's like, I'm just from Tennessee. I love us, but there are not a lot of us in comparison to other places. Mm -hmm. So that was always a goal. It's like, I at least got to I gotta bring all this shit home. Mm -hmm. I love, I just love everything about Tennessee, honestly. How would you define the Tennessee rap scene for those who don't know? It's different. Memphis music don't sound like, like, Motherfucking Nashville music, you know, and Chattanooga music, they got real pissed at me before, like a long time ago. But it didn't really have a necessarily a sound. I think a, Chattanooga music is more like Atlanta music, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's on it's the southeast there. coast, I mean, southeast part of it, and it's only like an hour and a half away from Atlanta, mm -hmm. so it sounds more like that. And I was always trying not to sound like I grew up, like, let me just say, I grew up studying y'all niggas, mm -hmm. every one of the from UMOs to all the notable co collectors before I started going and finding like, like niggas in the like skinny pimp type of shit from Memphis, before I started finding like the underground and all that type of shit. Like, so I would study y'all moves and I'm like Wayne Carter II made an album that sounded nothing like where you from, but still felt like that shit with the skits and shit. And he was like, yo, I can rap just as good as anything from the East Coast. Yeah. So my goal was always to always have that, but then to always, for a while, it was to not sound like that. So niggas didn't know I was from Tennessee. On this one, I was like, man, I miss home so much. I got to make something sound like the crib. So I tried to make something sound like a house party. Right. At my mom's house. You know what I'm saying? Some shit. I get to hear it tonight. That shit hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I actually like this shit. And I don't like no, nothing no. I do. We had gangster yeah. boo on this show mm -hmm. and she was just breaking it. down it's ill how you talk about Outkast because that's how she feel about Outkast and there's like a musical connection and, and a mutual respect between like 3-6 and Outkast they don't seem like they ever compromise yeah they don't seem like they ever compromise and that's just super tight as much as people it's kind of weird that people like during the era in rap where it seemed anti-South which is kind of crazy because they aren't they technically like the biggest act outside of like Eminem yeah like it's kind of crazy. Yeah, she got a song with Eminem. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah three and like three, six samples so fucking much. I think we sampled them like four, five times right. on this shit. And you can't not. A lot of shit out now. A lot of shit sound like that. Also, DJ, for me, also DJ Jimmy from, okay. uh, from New Orleans. Okay, yeah, yeah. That yeah. shit, it's like a million songs from that, from the, the bounce for the Bounce shit, now. right? Yeah. It's like a million songs come from that. I didn't even realize. Yeah, yeah word. Um, I want to give a shout out to Z. From DJ Booth. Oh yeah, my dog. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. really good dude. He's been very helpful to me in my career. Yeah. And then um I know that he's been helpful to you. He's had like he used to they used, DJ Booth used to basically put out it, here's how you be a rapper, <laughs> start a kit manual. Right. And if you didn't pay attention to it, like I don't know what you were doing, because it's it was very valuable information that he would be kicking all the time. Yeah, man, that's a good dude. Yeah, man. Um, hella, hella, oh, and the post. That's not even a post. The nigga hella helped me out. Like his he hella helped me out. Like oh, okay, getting man. his respect. Oh, and the like, post. You saying the post, yo, okay, yeah. Like, you know, yo. No. The, um the writer. That's my dog. He did a Maybe. lot of crazy. Maybe. Y-O-H. He did a lot of crazy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a lot of crazy write ups from DJ. Yeah, B. yeah. Man, I do. like the way reviews, reviews are so underrated because some people are they the way they articulate things in, on paper about some music be so fucking crazy. That you have to go listen to it. And yo, it's like yeah. one of those people. Hip hop journalism. Underrated. <sighs> yeah, and it's not enough people who know how to do this shit. You know, mm. it's like, it's not, it's not, especially in this era. There wasn't, when I was coming up, there wasn't a lot of good hip hop journalism. When you think about how many rappers are millionaires now compared to back then, it's more lucrative to do it. Even if, because you know, at the end of the day, you got features. So, mm -hmm. so it's like, how we used to think basketball, the NBA was big. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, damn, NBA is fucking worldwide. 
it's like I think we think rap's big right now, but it has so much what more it could go. Like we only got shit like Post Malone is a fucking like is a kid of rap. But we ain't got like like seven of those type of guys who, right. who come from a different background and splash on them. We only got like two of them. We, it ain't gonna even be. So imagine how big it'd be and how many different grounds it'd take when different people are different colors and that should expand. That's why the NBA type, that's why Giannis, him being in the NBA is cool, but him being from Greece and coming over here and killing that shit. Making right. him tighter. So when when rap, rap got so much bigger it can be, it's gonna be journalists and different, you know what I'm saying, languages and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Box office. Tell me how you got hooked up with the Smokers Club, those Juicy J, Currency, Damn. Wiz, Joey. My nigga Yomi. Okay. My nigga Yomi from New York. He was one of the dudes who would hit me up and talk to me about music. And he'll listen, he'll listen to me when I want to spill about, you know what I'm saying, how much I wanted to do this shit and my dreams and all this shit. Like my homie Matt, with my manager over there, he was one of them. We've been knowing each other for like shit, 10, 11 years. Okay. So around, what, like, like 2011, 2012, 2012, I think, um, he hit me up. He was like, look, you can open up these couple shows. They're not going to pay you. They're not going to take you. But if you show up, you can perform. And we did that shit. We took me and my homies, took two Hondas and drove from Nashville, to Jackson, That's a good move. That's a smart move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to try it. Mm -hmm. Just to try it out, see how it was. First time really performing. See if we'll get booed. Wow. And niggas fucked with it. It's some it's some fans that we got right now from that shit. From that. Yeah. That's such a good man. Everybody coming together on that shit. I was in awe of Smokers Club. Crit was down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just everybody like, and the fact and how everybody it was, was in their own lane. Legendary it's shit. Crazy, right? Wiz, Juicy J, jo like it's just like it's like what the fuck is this? Joey Badass when he first started, man, niggas used to be, man, I can't imagine being him. That's tight that he acting. Nigga, I remember nigga pulling me over in a car, being like, yo, you gotta stop, play this shit. That's how you heard Joey Badass? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm riding, I remember riding in the back of a fucking like mm -hmm. pickup truck in fucking Nashville, Tennessee, Antioch, middle of the night. Wow. Yeah. You know what's crazy for me? It was my son, Amani Fela, who's an excellent artist in his own right. Yeah. I had asked him, he was in high school. I said, yo, just, I don't remember the context of the conversation, but I was like, who's your favorite rapper? He said, Joey Badass. Nice. I said, who's Joey Badass? He said, he's a teenage rapper. I said, your favorite rapper's a teenage rapper? Never was somebody like that. You got to listen to Pac's first album to hear something like that. Yeah. So he, so my cousin Sadaf from Duo Live, I was like, I was like, yeah, my son Amani said Joey Badass. He said, it's a teenage rapper from Brooklyn. He said, Joey Badass. He said, that's Kimba's son. We went to high school with her. And that's what made me be like, okay, I got to go listen to this music. Yes. And I was blown Close away. Close to home. And then, and then I went up to do Static Selector's show. He's like, I work with this dude, Joey Badass. I was yeah. like, what? How you work with Static Selector already? Because he, he was cold. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so for somebody like me, like Joey Badass... He was cracking. Was he on? Was he like a SoundCloud artist at, at one point? He's. I think he was looking for his. I, it was like a mixtape. Then I'm like looking for an album. It was during that. Um, to me, I call it the creative control era, mm -hmm. where everything seemed to go indie for him. Yeah. yeah. But you you've been successful on SoundCloud. I didn't realize it at the time. I thought niggas was just getting that shit. But it's part of your story now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had beats by Flying Lotus. Oh yeah, beats by MF Doom. Had the fucking rap on shit that was tight. I had to, I had to those beats. I was making a mixtape initially and mm -hmm. just rapping over nigga shit because I couldn't afford beats and and I didn't, I couldn't really afford to buy the beats off SoundClick. I could lease them, but then somebody else had them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's one of them type of things, and it was practicing. Yeah, I'm just fascinated by that because you know I'm not I, from Practice. an era where you had to be in the industry. You had to get signed to a label. You had to, was, these things didn't exist. Yeah. So I guess what I'm asking is like, is there a blueprint for that? Is the there- The oh. fact that you can send a link from mm -hmm. your SoundCloud to, if you meet an a &R, mm -hmm. and he don't know who you are. I've never done this. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know who you are, if, for whatever reason, you acquire his fucking number, and mm -hmm. you happen to have a song that you think, or it may be that good, it's just almost as simple as copy, paste, send. And if that motherfucker hear it, it might be to start next week. You might be in fucking LA. Right. You I used to look at the back of album covers and look at where the labels at. And God bless my parents for birthing me in New York because I could be like, okay, I could I could hop a turnstile 
and go to that building yeah. on Sixth Avenue in the city and get to the lobby and maybe get back. I security. get dropping demos. I get like I get coming to the lobby and dropping your mm-hmm. demos or trying to hand it. That's the same shit. The same DMing shit. DMing somebody digitally. Yeah, it's like yeah. you can keep your email, but I know what your DM is, player. I heard that artists are now airdropping songs too if they're just in that the, happened to me on a plane. Whoa. I had my airdrop you gotta on accept and they airdropped me a song. I was yeah. like, yeah. Spooky. Yeah, spooky it's, as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even know that airdrop was a thing, so it's even spookier. Than and oh, playing, God, like, what is going on? What's happening to my phone? You got to keep you gotta stay, you gotta, <laughs> What is this? You got to stay current, man. I like oh, to airdrop yeah, random know. photos. You got this, this is how I found out. This is actually how I found out about airdrop. <laughs> Hilarious. What? You got an air tag? Nah, I just be using my phone for phone shit. No, nah, you need an air tag to put one on your keys. Yo, I'm sounding like a real fucking fogey. You really do, but at least you've now upgraded. This is like the fogeyest interview we've done on people's parties. He just upgraded his phone, so at least that's good. (laughs) What did you have, an eight? Yeah, I did. (laughs) Let me tell you how bad it was. I bought an 11 last year during the pandemic. And what what you do with it? He just I don't feel like knowing. I don't know how to change the information. I'm like, yo, take it. Change what? The information. You log into the... You log in. Listen, I don't got time for that shit. You log log in. (laughs) You literally you just you know what that means. In. That means I gotta find my password. Why don't you know your password? Because I got so many different passwords for so many different. Use things. the same oh, one. You have a good one. A good reliable. Yeah, I got one. a lot of things going on. I say have a shot. good reliable. One. I'm gonna change <laughs> mine. I'm gonna change my phone password. But do something clever. I got like. a, I got a phone. I got a phone. I, I'm using my iPhone 11. But the 12 done came out. Yeah, you Dude, and the 13 about to come phone. out now because the 12 is, is kind of. You got a one year old. You want to take good pictures? No, you want to take better pictures for your one year old. Don't, don't get they a better, say better phone. Pictures is on the other joint. Yeah, yeah. twelve is Samsung. amazing. Twelve, no twelve. Fuck them. <laughs> Damn. I Not love how concerned him. he is about yeah, that. I'm like, dude, come on, stay, stay as current. a collective. If there's gonna be one thing we all should do is get an iPhone. I believe you know, that. I'm glad that he's saying this because I've been saying this. So he had this eight for a whole extra yeah. year. And I had the eight that. for the whole pandemic. I'm the type to crack your shit. <laughs> My shit was cracked. Ah, uh, how cracked? <laughs> it got cracked. Did in it the, cut you? It yeah. got cracked in the last second on the second to yeah, last. Chill month. out, man. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um, you called your TDE signing a blessing from God. Can I said you, that. I, I th- <laughs> it was, but damn. That's a, <laughs> yes. Listen, here at People's Party, we know everything. <laughs> that's what they say. Uh, can you bring? Can you take us through that whole process? And was any part of it feel? Um, did you feel isolated or anything? No, nah, they like they like. So you want to sign to us? I'm like, yeah. It's like, all right. And it was like, you got to move in with us. So I moved in with Top. Mm. I lived with Top for like three years. And then I, two years. Then he let me get an apartment because he didn't trust me out here in the streets because I'm a high boy sometimes. <laughs> and so I moved to one of his properties. Didn't have to pay rent. <laughs> cool nigga, man. When I think about it, man, cool nigga. Paid electricity. Some type of way I couldn't manage to pay my electricity on time. I was a kid. Kind of really a kid. 24, but I was like, fuck, well, I ain't got rent, so I can just do whatever with the money I got. Didn't have electricity a couple times and shit. They still be chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to put everything on auto pay. But nah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm glad to hear this story because I like hearing stories about Top and Punch because obviously as an artist... You know, I'm shout out to Ab Soul, somebody who I, I have a great artistic relationship with, Kendrick, of course, Schoolboy, yeah. everybody, J Rock, you know, yeah. everybody, SZA, everybody. But like, I like hearing the stories about Top and Punch because I think it's good to have good partners like that. I feel like when you got a manager damn near, you got you should know what kind of manager you're getting. Like, and mm-hmm. they like damn near life managers. Mm-hmm. I was telling Matt, I was telling Matt. The way I disrespected my advance money, I'm like, if if I know, I'm like, it's other niggas who gonna do this. I'm like, y'all should sit down with a nigga and be like, yo, these are the things that we invest in. Maybe you wanna take some of this money that we're gonna give you that you're probably gonna blow. Maybe put it in some of these things. And you may hate it at first, but then you see something growing, it's like, damn, it'll right. prevent you from fucking it up. Cause man, you gonna fuck it up. You fuck it up. I fucked it up twice. I fucked up a couple advances too. Man, absolutely, Jesus, that bounce back, historic. <laughs> that should be historic. God, up. I used to bump that Sylvia demo a lot. That's right. That shit was super dope. The, I shot you down. That shit is a fucking masterpiece. I thought it was so tight, and then I thought I was gonna make a song that I thought was gonna be so much tighter than it, it immediately. What you mean? And I didn't. Nah, cause I when I made that shit, dog, mm-hmm. I was like, this gonna get me signed. Right. I was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like. Some type of, back then, I used to smoke 
uh, cigarettes and shit. So maybe that was it. I used to get into a zone where I'm like, I can't write a bad bar. I'm like a tunnel vision. And I still be seeking that place from time to time. And that was one of them. I was like, yeah, ain't nobody gonna not like this shit. Mm -hmm. and it's like, especially the, the type of rap I was trying to cater to. Yeah, and that way I described your style, I feel like it's almost most exemplified on that song. Yeah. That 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 shit I was talking yeah. about, like with the voices and yeah. it's fucking cinematic. Going up, going down. Yeah, I feel yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Ease. Wayne, I gotta I, I every time I say it, but this nigga Wayne, man, he used his ease in such a beautiful way mm -hmm. when he be getting that shit off that it's the part that you feel in your sternum. Mm -hmm. So I try to take them parts. And when you try to go, like when you try to be smooth, you know, you ever see, like to you, most of it sound like he ain't got teeth sometimes when you say certain shit. <laughs> right. And I'm like, if you can figure that out, figure out them different ways they be doing that shit, it's kind of crazy. Like, you can create some crazy shit. You can flip some, you can turn a regular word into something else. Word, word, yeah. word. That's um, J Rock. I was signed to Warner Brothers when he was on. That's when I met yeah. Top and Punch and J Rock, and they was running around Warner Brothers. And their, their vision was so cold blooded yeah. back then. And, and J Rock was so focused, but they didn't know what to do over there at Warner. Um, I really like how J Rock sounded that song. That might be one of my favorite schoolboy verses as well True. on that record. And you got, seem to have like a special bond with Schoolboy. Like y'all tour together. And my nigga, man. Yeah, man. He's on yeah, the new big project. Bro, man. Like that's a, you know what I'm saying? He ain't on this one. He's not on he it. Don't, we so probably they, gonna we, put it out. I think we gonna put Running on that, DSPs I thought running, or some shit I, I thought Running was gonna be It was some shit me and Kenny had made. Okay. And it's like really one of the, one of the only verses I got from Q for Real. That's a song okay. we made. Okay. They popped up on me with the Shot You Down and shit. I was like, what's that? Yeah, and, and so the, you did a video. They not in the video, right? Yeah, that's because it was like a surprise. That happened to me with the Get By remix. Get By was so hot that like we did a remix for it that everybody jumped on. Like, yeah. It was just like, okay, now it's everybody's song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, them niggas is like my heroes though. Yeah, man. Man, I probably went through the weirdest shit. Getting signed to niggas you look up to is probably weird as fuck to other niggas too. I had to normalize it because they pick at you. Right. They get at you quick. The, the, what's crazy is the the thing behind Zaywap. I probably shouldn't tell nobody this. Okay, the thing behind <laughs> Zaywap when they came in, mm -hmm. they type of shit. They type of niggas to flip popular culture shit. So during the time that was the first time Gucci had starts to call himself Guap, really for real. Mm -hmm. So they will call everybody, you know, Qwap, how the niggas do, but they call me Zaywap. After they called me Dot Wop for like, <laughs> like, how long was that shit? Like, <laughs> dot Wop. Like six months. Like, you just want to be a little Kendrick. Right, right, right. Dot Wop. That's yeah, like, that I shit was crazy, funny. dog. That shit was crazy. So eventually, after tour, after the Oxymoron tour, they gave me Zay Wop. I guess I got the, got some of their respect. That's funny. Yeah. But them niggas is bullies. But they love them. They, they'll, they'll kill a nigga for me. Oh, God. I know that. That's some real friends nigga. right there. No, real, real family. Yeah, real family. Yeah, yeah. friends don't kill for you. Friends, yeah, I, feel, yeah. I feel that. Stu dumb friends kill for you, fam. I feel that. Dumb friends Maybe. kill for you, fam. Maybe. My yeah, body. I like that. Yeah. I like that. All right. Your uh, debut album, The Sun's Tirade from 2016, is a great record. Thank you. And the album is about overcoming depression and drugs. That's what I was yeah, it's, it's, When they told me to sum it up. Okay. Well, <laughs> when you summed it, was, it, it up. It was just like a... It was a, it was a it was a collection of songs that I was okay with putting out. That's what all this shit really be. But if I have to put it in a, if I'm like, if a synopsis, I'm like, yeah. When I listened to it, it sounded like I was going through some shit. So yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you weren't actually going through anything? I was hella nothing? going through shit. That's Music be what I be doing. And it be like my diary. Because I used to write poetry. I'm trying to get back into it. But it be like, rapping's more fun than writing poetry. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I get why niggas do it. And it's a... There's a space that needs to be filled. Right. But I don't get why niggas don't rap. Because that shit fun. <laughs> that shit like, shh, that shit. Word. If you can't play basketball, flipping words is like, damn, nigga, I do that? I said that? Right. That's hard. I don't think I answered your question. I kind of got lost. Well, what I was going to ask you were, <laughs> <laughs> who are your models for putting that heavy emotional stuff on an al uh, album, but you're saying that you just kind of- Lupe. Okay. I remember I trying to tell, I try to explain to my mom. I'm like, I listen to he say, she say, and I'm like, mom, this is my fucking life. And she was like, go on somewhere, Rashad. <laughs> with this shit, you fell in math. <laughs> I don't want to hear about this Lupe fiasco, phenomenal ass nigga that you keep talking about. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to talk about Lil Wayne. Quit wearing fucking skull belts and shit around me, <laughs> and go to class. You must wear skull belts. Yeah, but it was them. Like Wayne's B size, uh, no Wayne's. Leaks from the Carter Three. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. And he had some of the more passionate shit on 
or out of Cash Money. Mm-hmm. On the, the songs he had put out from his first album, being about his, have, talking about his dad and shit and mm-hmm. all that type mm-hmm. of shit when his stepdad died, all the type of yeah, you know. So that nigga was really an archetype because he really was to me like the the most entertaining rapper ever, if not yeah. the best, the most entertaining. Mm-hmm. I still think Jay Z, if I go for word for word and the way he flips shit, the best. Wayne. Couldn't be the best, I guess, because you can't be better than Jay Z. <laughs> but he's definitely the most entertaining rapper ever. I think that's a good argument could be made for that. I always go with my Libras whenever it's a thing, but I'm also from New York, so I'm gonna have to go with Jay Z on this one and agree with you. But Wayne has led us into his life a little bit more than Jay Z has. Yeah, them on sure. the bus. You remember them on the bus freestyles? Crazy. But he he got a video that basically looks like a fucking Wayne on the bus. Mm. Shit, it's the hardest shit. That's what man. I was like, this nigga, that shit, this, this, this nigga's amazing. Thug's amazing, dog. Yeah, Thug too. He he up there. He up. I think he's up. I think he's trying to take Wayne's spot for the most entertaining rapper ever. Cause that that nigga hard. He pretty entertaining. That nigga hard. That nigga hard as hell. But Lil Wayne also had such a longevity career. He started when he was a teenager. So it's gonna take a lot for somebody to be in Lil Wayne's path. I feel for top, cause top gonna be watching this shit, and I ain't gonna talk about <laughs> niggas all the time. My type of shit, type of shit you could cry to, but like vibe to too. Right. It's really for like midnight smoking shit. It's for people. I'm expanding it to be for more than just mm-hmm. that. But initially, I was making music for my homies, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm also such a fan of other niggas, cause I know at the core of it, that's what they doing. Yeah. So. That's why I love that shit. It's like yeah. you really get to know niggas. That's why the comics shit's so crazy to me alongside the movies because to me with the comics, it's like if you if it's already... A, imagine somebody trying to write to Lil Quali mm-hmm. and then they do it good. Right. Imagine that. And like that's to me 60 years of fucking Spider-Man. It's like right. it's not the same Arthur. Right. It's the same story. So right. if a nigga came and wrote your raps and you was like, fuck. I could have came up with this, but this shit hard as hell. Mm-hmm. Fucking, I'm gonna use it. That's like, happened to me. Like, like I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I remember when I first heard "Little Brother." Yeah, I'm like, with, shout out them, shout with, out Pooh. Yeah, Pooh and 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 Fonte and Knife yeah. Wonder. What they were doing, I'm like, that sound like us. That's like, oh shit. Yeah. When I first heard "Blue and Exile," yeah, what "Blue and Exile" was doing, with how "Blue" was coming, I was like. Yeah. That shit sound like... Hey, man, niggas really gave y'all y'all shit around 2012, 2000. The freshman shit seemed to be heavily based on the sounds y'all created. That's yeah. what it took to be a freshman at first. The, the way it is now, it's tight because you can tell it's music. That's how niggas like music. It's crazy to think this music is going on right now. It used to be after shit, probably like, I say like 06. Mm-hmm. That shit was the underground. Yeah, I was living in LA in Studio City, and Devi Dev and um, EQ, who I was living with at the time, they had a radio show, Left yeah. Effect, where they would showcase artists from the West Coast. And it was out of my garage. And so right. Thursday came through, yeah. and he brought Kendrick through. Swear, that's how you met him? Yeah, in my that's garage. Hard. That's hard, And yeah. I heard him rapping in the garage. I was like, and I already knew about you and I, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I was like, who, who is this? You and I was hard as hell. It was hard. My baby mom put me on you and I. Shout out Bree. <laughs> Bree loves you. Work? My baby mom, man, my, my kids, my wife could call them my baby mom. Okay. My son's mom loves you to that's fucking beautiful. death. She'll pass out if, if I was really <laughs> sick. Oh God. But yeah, that's how I, that's how I met Kendrick. And we did, we recorded my I got a song with him pushed through that we recorded shortly after that. He was the first person we agreed on. Cause she was, I tried to play her crit. She was like, what the fuck is this? She wasn't trying to play crit. She hated Wiz. Okay. She likes better a little bit. Cause we we rode to fucking what's the shit that came out around fucking it was it uh, covert coop mm-hmm. the craziest EP to me the yeah. beats are fucking nuts yeah that's a good but dude too Kendrick was the only one we could agree on and I was like I want to be like him I'm like he's kind of like Wayne to me you know Tunji yeah Tunji Balagoon yeah. it might have been fuck around it might have been Tunji that first told me about you fuck around probably was it probably was I missed that quote through him that shit was crazy to me to meet a nigga like that quote was like cause (laughs) it's niggas where you hear him I get especially damn before streaming that's crazy you might hear a nigga a nigga verse and not even know who it is and it'd be the craziest shit that quote was like that for me and Magoo Okay, Magoo. we're not gonna have this fucking conversation right now his voice was nuts to me cause niggas niggas who's a certain age 30 
yeah. that swear to God that, that Magoo was... is someone that I need to have respect for. Magoo is amazing. Oh, and I know, no, 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 no. Hard. No, I'm going to push back against that. You don't disrespect no. uh, Q-Tip. Who? You don't disrespect Q-Tip. Magoo sound hard. like Q-Tip. He don't sound like he Q-Tip. He does not. His voice can't, can't sound like anybody. Shit. <laughs> Q-tip, yo. What did Ghostface say? What, what, what did Ghostface say on Cuban Links? I don't want no nigga sound like me, God. I ain't fucking listen to Ghostface <laughs> Ghost that much. I'm just now getting into it. I'm going to send you some shit. I was more on Method Man. I'm going to send you some shit. I got onto him after the niggas that came out, after Bronson. And niggas was like, he's just, he just uh, Ghostface. And I'm like, all right. Did you see when he got mad at Bronson for sounding like him? Uh, yeah, it was kind of it was out of pocket, but he do be kind of yeah. he he's, he was, lives where yeah. he at. He yeah, lives where he's from. Uh, but then Griselda kind of got a similar flow to me too, mm-hmm. like the way they do their shit, and that's so tight that that nigga created a fucking subgenre. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do with my shit. Word. It's like I want to do it like Quentin Tarantino. That's dope. I don't know how many of them I'm gonna do. But no disrespect to Magoo as a human being. You already did that. <laughs> I'm just no, I'm not disrespecting his humanity. Trump, that man. I'm just saying, Q-tip, bro. That's all I'm saying. Yo, for moms, uh-huh. you know, um, from I forgot which album it is. The the album is white. Oh, the love, the love, movement. the love theory, yeah. the love movement, love movement. That shit, yo, though, I don't talk enough about them enough too. Mm-hmm. They were probably the most impactful. Oh yeah, they it, they it for me. They it. Um, there's an artist I work with, Nico is. He's a huge fan of yours, by the way. Oh, thanks. Brazilian yeah. artist, actually, for one of the best rappers I ever heard. And um, right, yeah, you got put me on there. I right, do, yeah. but he, we will be in the car on tour in the van, all that. And these niggas will be like, yo, play some Magoo. They was like, Magoo is dope. His voice crazy. <laughs> voice I'm crazy. like, yo, y'all niggas, y'all niggas is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Think about 21 Savage. Uh-huh. If his voice... 21. Like, he say some of the most fucked up shit that make it sound cool that other niggas couldn't say just because of the type of... I will concede yeah. that because Magoo sound like Q-Tip... Yeah, I could see why niggas would like that. You came from that era. I ain't even. I don't even associate him because I only heard the him same like with a Nico couple and them. times. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. it's not like you know about Tribe. They know about Tribe. Yeah. It's no. It's no. But where he grew up in Orlando, Florida, in an era where yeah. Timberland and Missy was killing shit, mm-hmm. and they bring Magoo along with them, and Hard. they making. They, and they, I'm not gonna say they didn't make good records now. I ain't saying, this. I ain't saying the you know verses saying? when I go yeah, back yeah. and be like the verses is that fucking yeah. profound. Yeah, of course. But the I, voice was yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's like I understand. It's like with my niggas that I do on these songs now. Like I bring a nigga in the studio. Like if you in the studio, I'm like, come here real quick. Right. Say these couple words real quick, yeah. and that be it. And it be the thing hey, that make that shit pop to me. I guess we will give Magoo space for that lane. Because he did compliment to He probably did a lot for they. Think about that homie. Those homie for me either be a producer mm-hmm. that nowadays, or be the nigga who go and get some shit for us usually. Mm-hmm. And then he be at the studio long enough. I don't even know if you say he paying dudes because he really just fuck with you. Right. Smoking with you. Right. All that shit. It's like, man, you know, just rap something. Just rap something. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. They probably, he probably wanted his guy, he probably wanted Timberland's godfather. Kids, Godfather. <laughs> oh God, that's type of relationship. Word out. You're right. You're right. Um, I've turned. A, he's turned me around. We're never going to be able to hang with Timbaland no more. No one ever turns Who me else? around. This guy has turned me Who around. Who did you dead me? Oprah. Oprah. Can't go on Oprah. Can't meet Timbaland now. I'm sold. <laughs> like I wanted to know that workout regimen. Like <laughs> I can't do verses now. It's over. Mm-hmm. I just fucked that up. What's wrong? A great song off a great album. Killed his ass. Smoked his ass. <laughs> One of the best Kendrick Lamar verses. <laughs> Ever, but I smoked his ass <laughs> outside of the best rapper since 25. Shit, that was kind of crazy, but I smoked his ass. Niggas I love the know. confidence, that's how every rapper is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great album, though. The album, this does tie right again. You. I really do like that song a lot. Yeah. Um, B Day, I like a lot. Free Lunch is so fucking good. I can't believe Free Lunch is the type of shit that I hear, and I'm like, oh my god, what is what my I life? be wanting to be like y'all so much that I hate that when my simple songs be the one that go. Uh, meal ticket. T- I'm like, meal. cause I, it was just, it just sound tight to me. It's tight. And then so when they be like, what's what's, what's about? I like, nigga, I don't fucking know. <laughs> and it's kind of like a currency song to me. Not besides the hook. I get it. The verse, the verses kind of flow like it, like that. But that'd be a lot of my inspiration from a lot of different niggas. I'd be like, I gotta make a song today. Like I made a score mm-hmm. on this album, and it's like, I want to be Rihanna today. I feel that. Especially after Thug. Thug inspires me, mm-hmm. cause his album that he basically named. Uh, forgot which one it is. I listen to so much music. Um, I think it's the one where he wore the uh, the dress. The dress. Yeah. yeah right. His voices are fucking crazy. He do all these deep ass, yeah. crazy shit. I wish he'd do it more. But that's the part, that's the art part of it that people miss when they when they think about 
Atlanta music or trap music, or whatever he's doing, or thug thug music, whatever he's doing. Ludacris top five is Ludacris top five. Ludacris I, top five commercially is he the top five entertainer? It's subjective. Right? He's top five entertainer. Ludacris. Oh, for there's sure, a case to be made. There's a case to be made for Ludacris in many top five lists. It seemed like Hollywood took his rap ability out the release there. Well, I mean, are we going to talk about it? But then he got it, it back. It seems like he got it back it? the past couple of years. Hollywood, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. It's like no one has built. No one has beat it. Ice Cube has beat it. He's the only one because he came back independent and started making records with <sighs> Jay Prince in it. One day I want people to talk about him and Lil Jon's collaborations and how fucking nuts they were. Yeah. Lil Jon's. <sighs> Lil Jon is yeah. right. Bo Hagen. Shout out Bo Hagen on God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? China White. All that. Oh God. Yeah, man. That Hollywood shit though is tough. Once you get on TV, as a job on TV, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it's hard. Yeah. I'm 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 looking at no, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm not even gonna it's say like, it. like what if you really want to <laughs> say some real shit after you just did the Fast and the Furious? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Right. Silk the Shocker. What a great song. Yo. Why is the name Silk the Shocker? I be paying homage to all these niggas mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. I like that nigga. Even on the spit of shit, the way he talked, I used to think he had a speech impediment. Uh -huh. And I'm like, why is he rapping like that? Right. But it's a fucking style. Because then I saw, saw him do interviews, and I'm like, this nigga don't talk like that. Mm. So And it's, the flow was crazy. That song, with, that shit with him and Maya back in the day was crazy. Right. Like, that nigga was... And I like just the fact, that was during the time where if you like this nigga, and that, if the rapper is that good, then you gonna fuck with all his friends. Yeah. Man. Sid is real dope. She's amazing. Tell me about working with her. I would love to work I with her. I didn't never be in the studio with her. Like I okay, she DM'd her. The I DM'd her and was mm -hmm. like, yo, I have this song I really like you to do. Can you do it? And mm -hmm. she said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I be thinking niggas hate me. Because niggas do that for me. I ain't I went in the studio with none of these niggas except my homies. Mm -hmm. Like they were like the the random voices and shit. Like Souls doing a fucking Little part of the hook that niggas might may or may not notice, but I sent these in like a little nervous fan. I'm like, okay, oh. look, I know I'm me a little bit, <laughs> so let's see if they'll do it. Right, and then everybody did it. They were like, of course, that's dope. I'm like, fuck yeah, like fuck with you. Yeah, I love SZA. What was it like working with you? Worked with her on West Savannah, SZA. Stuck in the Mud, we Pretty Little Birds. Together. We lived together for like five years, four years. You dated her? We lived. Oh, you oh, okay, sorry. Dated. We gotta live together, date the little girl. I mean, typically <laughs> nah, I it was like Selma's in that crib. Oh, okay. it was like got seven, you, got you. Not seven. Matt was one on four minutes, he had to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, nah, he was about to say, oh, boy. Yeah. That's Deep. lit. Niggas made control out of that crib. Niggas wow. made all that shit out of this crib, shit. Yeah. Um, the video Headshots opens with a support group called Agony Anonymous. Um, that's very interesting. Can you break that choice down? I told him that I wanted the song to be about, I wanted the video to be about my struggle with alcohol. Okay. I mm -hmm. wanted it to be about that. And I kind of just give niggas free reign to do shit. I'm like, you get paid to do this. Right. I'm, I got like a couple ideas for you. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. Because I'm like, niggas do not come in the studio and do that shit for me. And when they do, I hate it. Mm. So I'm like, you do good. Let's listen to the song in a couple weeks. Let's come up with something. Right. You just think? let them go with their creative vision. Yeah. They got way deeper than I did. But. Right. I like that video a lot. Yeah. You work very closely with Kenny Beats. That's my dog. Yeah, man. Tell me about that relationship. And you called him your rap coach. Because he like, he's like, it's very rare that when people tell me that they fuck with my shit, mm -hmm. that I know they fuck with my shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, I always, some of my, a lot of times I feel like the fans are invisible. Mm -hmm. And the ones I meet are niggas who just like testing to see where my ego at today. And so I, I try to keep it chill. And I rejected everyone in Kenny's Beats for like two years. Mm. It's before Kenny was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny got hot, started listening to them beats again. He went back, I'm like, wait a second. I'm, I'm like, so I came humble. You wait, know what has I'm this saying? Ever, real quick, has this ever happened to you where you have beat tape and you was listening to it and you dismissed it and then somebody make a hit record with one of them beats? Nah, I mean, Travis, I did like, Tunji used to give me beats all the time. So it's a couple shits that I made that Travis got off he on. He got, yeah, he. Yeah. He got off on him. And I realized that nigga's like, man, I hope you don't see this. Some niggas be older than be older than me by but by still be the same age as me. And like and just like at least the way they do this shit. Nigga probably is a certain way how he is behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. But the way that nigga get his shit off is definitely professional as fuck look up to that shit. That's just right. tight. 
I hope I'll never meet none of these niggas. <laughs> now everybody knows I'm a fucking fan of every fucking body. Love That's you, Sony. Dope, PlayStation, not the not the label. We Warner over here, but you know, <laughs> PlayStation. Just everybody gonna see it now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Love them. Put it out there. Plug that. Today's a great day. Yeah, it is. Because the album is releasing today. Um, we just talked to Jaleel White. Who said he was at your album? Second time meeting him. Party. <laughs> Amazing. No doubt. Know the guy now. No doubt. Y'all best friends now. I ain't, um, no, I ain't saying all that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't saying they can come crash. Yeah. <laughs> you can't sleep right. on your couch. Yeah. Right. We smoked together. Right. Of you course. pass out if he smoked there. The purple or girl? Yeah. The, with the noodle? The yeah. noodles. Right. It's legendary shit. That's legendary shit. You got legendary shit going on on this album. Duke Deuce. Legend. Lil Uzi Vert. Legend. Jay Rock and Jay Worthy. Legends. SZA, you know, like just, Legend. just talk to me about what, well, at this point when they see this, this album will be out and cracking. So let's talk to the people. I think what I'm here to do is to just do what's laid in front of me because this shit's crazy to me. When I, Because I try to find a reason behind all this shit. Mm -hmm. How the fuck I can pull this shit off. One of my managers are amazing. They know everybody. Top knows everybody. Even you may not know you know Top, but Top probably fucking knows you. Right. He knows what you're doing when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. <laughs> Santa. He wears red all the time. <laughs> Think about it. All right. Gangster. He bring Christmas to the hood. He is Santa. He's Black Santa. Literally every year. I can't wait for the giveaway this year. <laughs> I freestyled that. This is how I be making these raps. It ain't even. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Your album release. Yeah, comes you got out an album tonight. coming out. <laughs> oh man, I'm finna go eat right some now. food with my mom. That's right. That's it. I'm not finna go get fucked up or do nothing. I'm I got a pocket full of edibles. Yes. But like now and later, you know what I'm saying? Go get a steak. <laughs> and that's about it. How you eating your steak? Medium. Mm. Or medium rare, depending, but ma mainly medium. Sometimes depending on the quality, I mean the quantity of some I'm eating, I start remembering. Then maybe God don't want me to eat meat as I'm cutting it, <laughs> as I'm cutting into the flesh. I'm like, this isn't right. But then I eat that shit anyway. I'm like, you know, you got to power through it. <laughs> I stopped eating beef before they came out with like Kobe beef and Wagyu beef. Oh, it's amazing. You lost. I know. I you know. can just just try do it. it. Just maybe I will piece. one day. You know, I don't really go over niggas' houses vegan. You say you don't go over their house? Except my nigga Hugh, because he's a he's a chef, so it should be good. They want to vegan shame you. But I don't go. No, nah. I was gonna tell my vegan joke that I usually tell. Ain't me to eat. You I know what? The last time you. I told a vegan joke on this show, I looked at the comments and they said, "Is Quali always gonna tell that vegan joke whenever somebody says?" Well, just vegan? tell it. For, no, I can't. Just go I'm back. Like, and can we get some of the well, kale chip? I think can that I? vegans should leave kale us chips. alone. I fuck with plantain though. I fuck with the plantain chips. Those are good. Vegan no. food is is, is is really come up. They're good sides, bro. Vegan it's food is not, ve it's not, they call stuff like. But you need protein, huh? I feel like because of my ancestors and the shit that black people have gone through and the food that they didn't eat, I should fucking overindulge beside, but don't get full. I believe that now. I understand yeah. that now. Don't well, I mean, get you know, full. It, it always, you but know, I should I, try that shit. You know that like, like, like. Pig's feet and not that rings. shit. No, but that shit in the future. I'm telling you. It's, I'm telling you in the future. We we yeah. a few years away from that being a delicacy. Cause yeah. all that shit that is a southern delicacy. delicacy they're gonna no, bring like, it back. The shit niggas. Look, if you watch Scarface, right? You watch uh, Scarface. I mean, I know niggas who eat pig feet right now. Right, but if you watch Scarface, he say, "I'm sick of all this octopus. I eat octopus all day, all night." That's what he says because that's what poor people ate in Cuba. But now, if you go to a fancy restaurant, you get octopus, no. lobster, shrimp, no, you get all that squid. shit. Squid. And it's fried. That's why it's fried. Calibre. I don't just be eating right. like. No, I'm talking about octopus. You be eating just like oct octopus. Oh, it's you delicious. What's up, man? What's <laughs> up? I, I, live? Oh no, 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 no! I'm not. This ain't. See, cooking. I seen nigga eat something live. Old that boy. Shit be that's going, old boy. No, shit. I, one of the homies. You ever seen the movie Old Boy? Yeah, but niggas eat that shit for real live in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, Isaiah Rashad. <laughs> it's your boy. People's party is proud to have Isaiah Rashad. Thanks. I'm gonna go get a steak. No doubt. I appreciate Happy it. album release day. Thanks for having me. No doubt. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. No doubt.